Jan in Oslo, Norway writes to me and he says, I am considering investing in a higher end DAC to lift my digital source closer to my analog loveliness. <laughs> I love us. Sometimes I actually like to stream new music uh, I don't have on vinyl. Yep, we all do that. There are several DACs I've considered, but looking into the tube DACs with this R2R sound business, which is supposed to come close to vinyl. Yeah, we can debate all that. Okay. Um, LTA is getting some good reviews, but PS, also, PS Audio is also getting good reviews on your latest DAC, the DirectStream. What is the benefit of tubes in a DAC? Will it give the warm analog feeling, the lack of res or me meaning a lack of resolution? And when we talk digital, would you go all in with only digital or lean more towards a tube circuit design? Prices are crazy, and some of those high-end DACs are nuts. Thank you, Paul. <laughs> well, ain't it the truth? God, what did I just see? Was it DCS? I think it was DCS that now has a six-box DAC that was, I'm going to say $650,000. I'm probably wrong. But, uh, yeah, bananas. So, DACs are, as we know, digital to analog converters. And one of the things I've been preaching since day one is that the single biggest difference in the way a DAC sounds is the way its output stage is constructed. And by that, I don't mean that it's soldered nicely. I mean the way it's designed and implemented. If it's a vacuum tube, vacuum tubes have a sound to them. And of course, there are some wonderful vacuum tube output stages that DACs have traditionally used. There are some wonderful analog FET stages, like take DirectStream. DirectStream is unusual in that since, well, God, how long has DirectStream been out now, 10 years? When Ted Smith first came to us and said, you know, every DAC out there is a basically PCM based and pulse code modulation is great, but it uses the step. This is this R2R that he's talking about. Uh, R2R means um, that there's a ladder network so that when we have, say, a 16 bit word, there are 16 steps on this ladder or 24 steps on this ladder for a 24 bit and each of the steps on the ladder is a resistor that is 2x times the size of the first resistor so r times 2 r times 2 r times 2 r so 1k 2k 4k 8k like that right and as each of these steps uh, comes in it forms this voltage level and enough of these together forms a signal right so chop 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 ted came to us and said there's a better way to do it it's called dsd and dsd instead of this r2r ladder network and all this other stuff that uses for pcm it uses instead what's called pulse density modulation which is a single bit and it's as close to analog as you will ever get. You, I call it analog. That makes some people very upset. Oh, it's not analog. But kind of is. And how do we know that it's analog? Well, because we can take the direct stream, that digital stream, put it directly into an amplifier, and you get music. Try that with PCM and all you get is noise. So our DirectStream DAC use, has a very simple low-pass filter, some stuff to raise the level up so we get enough volume out of it, a low-pass filter, and out it goes, right? Clean as a whistle. And the way that we design the output stage has a huge amount to do with how it sounds. Now, we don't use a vacuum tube because in this case, <clears throat> it really wouldn't buy us anything. But the combination of the DSD plus the output stage makes all the difference in the world. Now, the DAC you're looking at, if it's an R2R, is not that kind of DAC. 
And it's okay. It's not my choice in DAX. The PCM-based DAX uh, are quite good. They measure very well. I don't like the sound of them as much as a DSD-based DAC, but for whatever reason, they also are very dependent on that output stage. So you're just going to have to listen. I can't tell you that one is going to be better than the other. I can tell you that pretty much a majority of Sonics depends on that output stage. So have a listen. All right. Good luck. Thanks. Mm -hmm.